Okay, hello everyone and welcome to 3D Loot Lab. Um, today we have the privilege and honor of speaking with Adil, the brains and master chief behind, I guess, uh, the Proforge 4 and MakerTech. Um, and uh, just as some background, uh, the Proforge 4 is this brand new uh, th tool changing 3D printer that's hit the market. It was on Kickstarter, as we can see right here. This was the Kickstarter. It just successfully completed. And we just got deliveries this week. Like I actually have the deliveries come this week. I just have not had time to open up. So I'm, but I'm super excited. And I'm also uh, super thankful, Adil, because I know you've been super busy and yet you're just taking some time part to um, to speak with us today. Uh, so first off, Adil, how are you feeling how, with the, about the project and everything? And yeah. Uh, well, well, firstly, thank, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I think it was a little bit, uh, a little much, but uh, thank yeah, you nonetheless. Uh, I am grateful to be here speaking to you as well mm -hmm. and yeah very very excited that the backers have got their printers now and I'm starting to see people put these machines together and yeah just excited to see where we can go with this. Awesome yeah and uh, just for the audience and some, some people who may tune to this are probably backers and then some people like have never even heard of this uh, printer before um, but uh, I just got it right here for those who, who are watching uh, we have uh, three different, like uh, I guess, tiers of the Pro Forge Four. I got like the the Ultra because I, I wanted everything. Um, but uh, so, do do you know how? Uh, well, I don't know off the top of head. Do you know how many people like got which tier? Uh, yeah, most people went for the Ultra in the end. Oh, okay, that I makes think sense. About three quarters, I want to say, three went quarters. for the Ultra. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like it has the uh, the four print heads. Um, I mean, you could have yeah. just got this Pro Forge with one head or two heads, and it has the enclosure, touch screen by the looks of it, calibration camera, um, the orbiter filament sensors, all them couplers, and a hardened steel nozzle, extra flex plate. That's great. And this is a kit, and um, I guess a lot of people will compare this with the Prusa XL, which is not quite a kit. It could be fully assembled or semi assembled. Um, but this, uh, for a lot of us, uh, this, this is much cheaper. And. Um, uh, you know, there's, uh, the, yeah, the, we could compare later, I guess. Um, but uh, well, one fun thing before we start is I want to show you something. Uh, right here, this, I don't know if you know what this is, but some people might recognize it. These are, this is from the uh, Bamboo Lab uh, AMS. The, there's a poop shoot, and these are the purge items. And this is like, uh, this is like five kilograms of just purge filament. It's probably like half of the uh, purges I've ever had. And if you think about it, like, uh, it, it's probably like every 10 kilograms of purge filament is about maybe two to three hundred dollars worth of wasted material. And I'll say that the, the tool changer will eliminate it, but um, we probably could expect like 80 to 90 percent of that to, to go away. So one of the that's one of the key uh, things of the I'm really looking forward to with the, the Proforge 4. Yeah, t tool changing technology is definitely the way forward in multi material printing, I think. And also, uh, yeah, just getting rid of that waste material is, is massive. It's, it's one of our goals as a company to really create an efficient method of doing multi material 3D printing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the big challenge for us is uh, even with the tool changer is to get rid of that final 10% which is the priming tower. Um, we're doing, we're testing some things, we're working some things behind the scenes to basically get, you know, get, get multi-material printing uh, done with zero waste. Wow, um, okay. But, but right now it is close to that 95% in comparison to a, a AMS system. A multi-material system where you're having to literally purge the entire hotter. Yeah, to get rid of the um, the the, yeah. the the color from before. And I know with my whites, when I'm going from white to black, oh no, sorry, from yeah. black to white, or even I find the blues and reds to white, I have to purge so much filament, and it, and yeah. it also takes a lot more time too. So yeah, uh, that's another yeah. big factor. And and if you're printing something, uh, you're printing PVA as your support material. You don't really want to be wasting mm. uh, expensive material uh, on a purge tower, really. Uh, you want to be as efficient with that material as possible, and um, yeah, that's that's one of our biggest goals uh, hmm. with uh, with our tool chain system. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and just while we're on the subject, like the Bamboo Lab AMS, I, I love my bamboos. They're the, the, probably the best um, color changing, uh, seamless color changing uh, printers on the market. 
uh, but it has its limitations in, in not just what we mentioned, but uh, uh, at least I haven't been able to print like PBA in there. Um, it doesn't it doesn't work so well with uh, TPUs either because of the whole like retracting and putting in the filament. Yeah. Um, well, with the tool changer, it's much simpler. Like it just it sits in the the, the hot end, and then you just change the hot end. Um, uh, yeah, so exactly. Wrong, yeah. Theoretically, yeah. Yeah. So so each hot end is direct drive. So TPUs are nice and easy to do. You may have to slow things down a little bit, but it's considerably easier than uh, a a system with a Bowden tube. Um, and then with PVA, you can also set the hot end to have a standby temperature. So it, you don't overcook your filaments either, and you're not running into issues of uh, issues with essentially retracting and trying to uh, put PVA back in, and 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 having it mix with um, whatever else you're trying to uh, print with. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought about the yeah having a standby temperature. Uh, that I guess that mm. is a thing. Yeah. Okay. I guess uh, may maybe we'll back up if if you if we can, and well, maybe we could talk a little bit about the the project, um, how it went, because obviously you put it on Kickstarter, and there was a little bit of a delay. Um, it's not like Prusa yeah. delay where it was like I was waiting two years for my Prusa XL. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you want to open up a little bit about like what what was going on behind the scenes, the the problems and the solutions, and yeah, some of us might be interested. No, I know I am. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, the biggest reason for the delays weren't anything technical they were more just people wanted us to improve the machine um, oh, what what we what we advertised on Kickstarter and what we actually ended up delivering were, uh, was almost a, was almost a pro forge for v2 uh, in a sense uh, so, so much was so much in the design was was actually changed right. um, from, from the top of my head I, I can list off like the, the, the biggest things that were changed uh, yeah. Yeah, so the the tool plates and the master plate itself, the, the design had to be changed a little, and we also changed the material that they were made from. Mm. Uh, we switched over hardened stainless steel. So in the Kickstarter, you see it, it's yeah, it's a combination of aluminium and mm. uh, ball bearings. Um, but yeah, so so we decided to switch over to to this to this design, which uh, was just so it was just so much better and so much more precise, so much more. Uh, uh, effective for for the long term use mm. of this machine mm -hmm. um, and then from that we also added uh, sleds underneath so instead of the purge buckets we decided that we're just going to go ahead and use uh, these sleds to block the flow of filament right. and then you, uh, use software to essentially control the retraction to, in order to basically push off the need for a uh, purge or prime at the beginning. Um, okay, uh, that, that, that's another thing um, that we changed. We also changed the mounting bracket so that that's uh, if you, yeah so yeah it's described in the Kickstarter as well that we yeah. wanted to change the, the, the bracket to be a single piece. We also made updates to the LCDs, uh, the touchscreen display, we moved that to the center of the machine mm. um, on a floating mechanism and a few other things as well that were uh, that were changed to uh, change in the design, uh, and that's what really um, mm. <laughs> took us a little time to to get to, um, to to get from those design updates to being able to just push the button on uh, getting manufacturing started. Oh, okay, right. And, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, no, I I didn't think that. I, I was just assuming that it was like you know there were some manufacturing problems and last minute like uh, quality control things, but yeah, but. No, it's great that you. Uh, I think it's worth the wait. Then if we get all those upgrades, um, and it yeah, just, like yeah, there's no uh, there's no brush on here. I right? just I wanted to mention that. So it just like clamps on the hot end, and there's no need for a brush. Like there won't be any like uh, you know purge blobs you found with your testing. yeah. So well, we're, we're, that's what we're trying to work towards so at the moment to get rid of those those blobs. Um, what's needed is a draft shield or a prime. Tower, which ah, is ah, okay. what we're currently at, with uh, ninety percent less waste compared to a compared to an AMS machine. Um, but we want to get that down to essentially a hundred percent, so so zero percent waste. Um, uh, and and that is something we're working towards in software, and potentially also a um, potentially a redesign of the silicon 
uh, pad. So there, there are a few things in the works that are uh, that should be coming uh, to fruition in the next in the next month or so. Mm. Uh, will they, expect, will they... expect to see that early, early next year. Oh, okay, great. Um, was there also um, changes to like the camera? I think the, there was an update. Uh, there was maybe yeah. Some different cameras have been used and how's how's the calibration going? Do we have the calibration quite yet or is that still something that we're gonna that's being worked on? Yeah, so the calibration camera is what we're using currently and it is in the works that we've got auto calibration tool. Um, it's just a matter of time. It's not the the technology is is there, we, we know how to implement it. It's just a matter of we just need the time to get it done. Oh, okay. um, and we we've just focusing so much on getting the getting the machine uh, ready and shipped out, so uh, yeah, it's it, it is coming. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, we just got just the firmware a couple of days ago, I think. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, expect an update to that probably in the next few hours as well. So oh, really? it okay. is. It's it's still very much early days, and we're still ironing through a lot of uh, a lot of things, things that slip through the net from from our side as well. Mm-hmm. We're working on, um, to support users to basically. Uh, uh, get get them get them up and running um, and uh, yeah but uh, I think overall ninety ninety nine percent of the uh, the machine and what we ship we're, we're really happy with. Great, um, yeah. Uh, so um, that was the the process delivering. Um, I was it was mainly just slightly delays because all the upgrades you're doing. And um, yeah, so I guess the next thing, uh, if you don't mind, I thought I might as well compare this with the biggest competitor, the biggest, um, I guess, printer on the market, unless you know of other ones. But as far as I can know, uh, as far as I know, there aren't really many options for uh, for tool changing 3D printers or desktop uh, at home versions, at least. Like um, it's really just the Prusa XL, ProForge, and then a lot of times it's just people's personal product uh, projects. Like, um, um, and uh, yeah. So, are there? Would you know? Are there any other like competing? Tool changes out there. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the, the original tool changer was the one from E three D, and the ProPush four is the mechanism for the tool changing is based entirely upon uh, their design. Um, so the the E three D machine, I think they recently discontinued it. So I uh, yes. I think you're right. The the market, it's just uh, the ProPush four and uh, the Prusa XL. Um, I imagine tool changing will probably become more and more popular over the next few years. So more machines like them out, um, but yeah, I think at the moment it's just uh, the Prusa Four and the Prusa XL. Yeah, I yeah, I'm a little skeptical about like how, how they'll. I think you're right, but I, th- I just feel like there's been lots of leaps in the 3D printing community about like you know it'd be speed or changing colors or higher temperature enclosures, all, all all that jazz, better acceleration. But I feel like the tool changing aspect is that much more complicated and harder for engineers to be able to produce that it's going to be a little slower than a lot of the adva- other advancements we've seen. But I, I, I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, you probably know. Like, it's pro- it probably, probably a lot of uh, work behind the scenes, like uh, yeah, getting it just right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I have a, a video here. This is a very good video from uh, YGK3D, and he was one of the uh, uh, people who got the Push XL5 head um, early on, and he had he has a couple of videos, and uh, early videos were showing that he was having you know uh, uh, quality issues um, with the, the the tool changing. Like single head is fine, um, but as you can see here, he has banding, and it's whenever yeah whenever you change the tool head, I think he's identified that um, there's slight shifting um, in the tool head. I mean the tool heads switch very uh, look like they switch very quickly. And very smoothly, like we see right here. But if we go down to here, a closer look revealed that the tools still weren't perfectly parallel to the tool changing right. mechanism when picked. Oh, sorry, full screen. Not supposed to be full screen. Uh, but as you as you might have heard there, it's not perfectly parallel once when they not always perfectly parallel when they make the tool change. So he uh, and it looks like it's like a very uh, two-dimensional uh, tool tool change and I'm, I'm thinking uh, that compared to what you have on the ProForge 4 it's more like a three-dimensional change because you have like a three-way locking mechanism 
but this is all my guesswork. So, uh, but what you have here, um, how does it work exactly? It, it pulls in. I think you were telling me it, it, it has a very strong force. And will it? How, how does this like? How do you think this might be better than say maybe the pro? I mean not the pro the Prusa in terms of the locking mechanism for accuracy. Uh, yeah, so, um, so some of that banding, actually, we originally had some issues with that from uh, the aluminium ball bearing design. Um, we, we overcame our banding issue with uh, essentially just better manufacturing. So, so the plates that were shipped out are hardened stainless steel, but they're also deemed incredibly precisely um, to 0.1 millimeters. And that, that increased precision and tolerance is really what allowed us to essentially um, get really, really precise and repeatable tool changes between tool heads. Um, so this, let's so so, go, so going through the mechanism. The mechanism is essentially based on the E3D design, and the way it works is it's essentially a kinematic couple. So a plane is defined by three points, right, and three semi spheres that you see coming off of the. Uh, the uh, the tool plates on the printhead, they line up with the notches on the mass plate. And right. in the center of the mass plate, you can see a cam, you can see a cross shape. And that cam slots into the keyhole shape on right, the... Right here. Uh. Yeah, so it slots into there, and then the servo behind the tool carriage rotates, and essentially pulls the two plates together. And the servo behind, so, so you can probably see there's like a, a little yellow mm -hmm. spring inside. So that is a, um, is a die spring. It's a really, really tough spring. And the servo that's powering it is a 40 kilogram um, torque servo. So the reason, and that servo is arguably with the overkill, but the reason we needed it to be that strong and the reason we chose such a strong spring as well mm. is because the ProForge 4 was designed to not just be a tool changer but also a high-speed 3D printer. And when you're accelerating back and forth um, at high at high speeds, mm. um, you don't want that printhead wobbling. Um, so that's why it's an incredibly high force. Mm. Uh, and that also helps with... Uh, making sure that um, the printhead, when it's picked up, is placed in a really repeatable manner because the force is so strong to begin with. And so all of that really just helps um, helps our machine to be uh, so precise. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. And so uh, these like uh, these balls on the end, when it pulls in with such force, it if there's any a uh, misalignment. When it first goes in, it pulls it into place. Like it will yeah, move precisely, in, precisely. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, ev yeah. every uh, well, I guess circular direction in, um, and that spring, like I guess, like uh, would it have to be replaced at some point, or it can just keep uh, it can keep going no, like the, tens of thousands of changes or something. Yeah, so the spring can keep going for quite a while. What, what does need to be replaced though is the cam itself. So the cam is. The, the little, if you see, you see the cross shape on the uh, on the master plate. Yeah. That that little cam does need to be replaced. It's very inexpensive. It's designed to be replaced. worn. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So the tool plates themselves are hardened stainless steel, whereas the cam itself is just stainless steel. So it is designed to wear over time, um, and that is something that should be changed. Well, it depends on your printing, but I I say. Every every thousand, few thousand or so tool changes, it, it, it switches. Uh, it should be should be switched. Which it, and it's a very inexpensive part. Right. You can, um, every few thousand. Yeah. So we we include a spare one also, and you can pick up a pack. Uh, they'll be available on the site for like uh, a few dollars. They're super inexpensive. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I probably have to pick up a couple of those because some some prints if you yeah. have a lot of color changes. I, I guess there's four yeah. heads, four colors. Yeah, you, uh, you yeah, can you can it, you can go through them. Yeah, yeah. 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 But okay. they they are designed to be a really cheap consumable. Mm. So it's just part of the tool changing uh, system that that piece just needs to be replaced. 
Mm, okay, great. That's good to know. Um, yeah, and uh, do you know the much about the Prusa XL? Like, did, did, would you have when you were like researching designing? Were you um, kind of like comparing and seeing what you could do to to beat it, um, or 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 not so? Honestly, much? not really. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I knew what the Prusa XL was. I knew, I knew its spec sheet, but beyond that, I wasn't really. I mean, I've, uh, for, for the most part, the tool changing mechanism was inspired by seeing what the seeing how the E three D machine worked and basically developing on that system. And then the rest of the inspiration from the machine came from uh, of the Voron uh, the Voron design and uh, the VZ bot. So the, oh, nice. those two machines that were sort of heavily impacted. Uh, the de the design of the Pro Forge Four. So so the, the Pro Forge Four is essentially a a, a, a merge or if if, if Prusa, Voron and uh, Vizibot had a baby, be, right. it would be Pro Forge. And yeah. trying to take the best of everything. And because yeah, because I know the yeah. the um, yeah. the um, uh, brands that you went with and uh, uh, and, and the components you went with are like pretty much top of the line as of right now. Yeah. Like yeah, belts, we, we did have LDO mode. Yeah, sorry. yeah. I was going to say we we did have to uh, switch over from the Raspberry Pi to the Big Three Tech Pi. Oh, um, right. But in the end, it, I think the Big Three Tech Pi was a great option. It's a, it's a board that can. It, it, it's designed for three D printers. So uh, be, because during the pandemic, it was just impossible. Um, it was just impossible to get uh, Raspberry Pis, and that sort of rippled on for a few years. So so we we couldn't really get our hands on any. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean the components are top of the line: LDO motors, gauge mm -hmm. belts. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and so the sorry the um the what was the Pi equivalent? Is it the Pi equivalent like a Raspberry Pi three? Um, what we have here. Yeah, I think yeah, it would be equivalent to a Pi four, I think. Oh, even a four. Okay. Maybe a three. Yeah, oh, oh, I that's definitely thing. overkill. Uh, well, I, I I don't maybe at this speed and acceleration you need it, but uh, but yeah, uh, I run most of mine on on Raspberry Pi threes, but yeah, uh, that's great. Um, and I I don't know what parts uh, Prusa is using, um, but uh, I I I think they would be at the same or or, or less in terms of like specs. So, um, and plus the uh, the Prusa XL. Uh, oh, it has five heads. That that's one good thing about the Prusa XL. Um, but it doesn't have an enclosure. Like you guys have, which you actually also said that you, you've changed it up a little bit to accommodate, I think the um, uh, the wiring that's arcing over. Yeah. yeah so uh, initially, the the uh, the enclosure the, the enclosure roof had some slots for the cables. We found that the slots didn't work perfectly, and so we re we've redesigned it now. So it's uh, um, I don't know if it's, uh, the the images on the site need to be updated. But the um, the new roof sort of it goes over the cables, and uh, yeah, so the, the the cables aren't the cables are all enclosed within within the enclosure. Yeah, I think that makes sure because you don't want it pinched, <laughs> right? You, that's that's the shape of it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the screen is on in the in the middle of the front. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, and more comparison of the Prusa XL. Uh, just I've I've had some questions about about this from from like friends and people online. Like some people have got both. Um, yeah, um, I think those are the main differences. But yeah, the acceleration seem, well, is is much more pressing. You have quad motors um, mm -hmm. on, yeah. on the Pro Four. Uh, yeah, and I I think the main thing a main difference right now. Well, we'll see. I, I think I feel like the uh, uh, the tool changer head that that we just went over is is probably what, what put it ahead for me because at the end of the day, I mean, there's so many three D printers out here, but this is this comes down. This is a tool changer, so you need the tool changer to be like robust and accurate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, people in the Cruise XL community are uh, figuring out how to uh, fix their their um, quality issues. Um, like that that lost individual that we had up here, he's he ends up creating a mechanism where it bumps the whole head to. <laughs> help shunt it and align it properly and uh, that works well for him mm -hmm. um yeah but i'm super excited to put it together i know you've got here the uh um the, the how-to guides uh to put together i think you mentioned a good evening too might be needed to put it together 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Testing. Good evening or two. Um, yeah, it depends how much you want to, uh, how much time you want to devote to the assembly. Uh, if you want to take time with it or just power through it. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So th those guys are they're all up there. Uh, we, we've got I think two more to release. They should be up in the next few days. It's pretty much just uh, the calibration and your first print uh, guide. And I think the, the Clipper guide was just released the other day. Yeah. So I think, to, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, I think um, about two thirds of all machines have been delivered. A third oh, are still great. on the way. Mm. And um, yeah, I think most people are uh, getting through the bill. They're somewhere halfway through, I think. Okay. And then so. you've also been taking orders from your website post Kickstarter, right? And that's going to be like 20, a 2024 thing, right? Well, one yeah. So we're. Yeah, so, so we're kind of holding off on doing any um, serious marketing. It's mm. probably why you've not re been hearing much about the machine anywhere else. It's uh, it, it, it's it's on purpose. We're, we're holding back on doing any marketing until we, we're absolutely sure that what we've got is something we really want to uh, really, really market properly. And uh, so, so yeah, that is, on the, that is on the plans for 2024. It's to really just push marketing and grow as much as we can and uh, hopefully get more people using uh, the machine, grow the community, grow the ecosystem, start seeing some third-party um, tool heads come out for the machine as well. So we, we, we've been, been in talks with a few with a few different companies about that. So, yeah, you can really expect to see a good ecosystem being built around uh, the ProForge machine. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I'll help with the marketing too because I, I plan to do a whole host of videos of the capabilities. I'm particularly interested in like, you know, having different nozzle head sizes and like mm -hmm. going to the point two, the exterior and then interior is like bigger and just like, like that, that's something yeah, I've never that's been a fun able one. to do. Yeah, yeah. No, that's going to be super fun. Um, and it, it, that, I guess that was what I was going to end off with about like the future and what's, what's, uh, what we can expect. And you really said that, you know, we, we can expect a lot more uh, coming from you, yeah. like collaborations by the sounds of it, like different mm -hmm. tool heads possibility. Um, I can I can think of other things. Uh, what about like would there be um, like a uh, ProForge version two, or is there like would would you ever be considering like expanding it to more heads, or maybe just the heads uh, you can buy separately? And I don't know. It's probably too common to add add to a pre existing printer. I'm just putting it out there. Any any future possible developments you can share with us? Uh, at the moment, it's just uh, we're just pushing the ProForge four as much as we can and. There is something in the works for sure, so um, which we'll be announcing in a few weeks. That's top um, secret right now. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little bit secret at the moment. Oh, um, nice. Just want to make sure that it's uh, that we can, that we can do it, and uh, but I'm pretty sure we will be able to. So yeah, uh, expect expect an announcement in a few weeks about about something else. But as far as the ProForge Four is concerned. Mm. Um, expect to see a lot more development going forward with the machine you're not just buying a locked in machine that's that's something else i want to um, state so right. with the stuff like the bamboo machines the these machines are designed to be closed closed source you're, you're essentially living in there yeah. and they're walk hard and essentially as similar to the way apple uh, operates with with their product what you'll get with the proforge 4 is essentially a custom pc so right it's not a printer per se it's more of a platform a platform where you can develop a platform where you can build on a platform that you can expect us to release upgrades for so as far as seeing the proforge you're, you're way more likely to see proforge for upgrades rather than a straight up new machine so expect proforge 4.1 4.2 4.3 um, more so than a proforge 5 um, because of the, the way that we designed it and the way we want to go forward as a company is mm. to really take advantage of the open source spirit, which is mm. what the uh, which is what I personally think three D printing and the community itself is is built upon. And so we're we're open to collaborate with anyone and everyone who who wants to. And the machine is designed specifically to be to to allow for that. Well, that's great. No, th th thanks for that, that note. That's very important. A uh, very important difference, even mm -hmm. like between you and Prusser. I, I know I keep bringing up Prusser, but but yeah, Bamboo yeah. Lab and, and Prusser are, are both big, and, and uh, yeah, they're they are do seem very they are close and source, and but it's great to hear your perspective and your vision for the Proforge Four and the community 
uh, the reprinting community, and uh, it's great to hear that that is the direction that you're trying to go with. I'm really excited about that, and um, yeah, that that it, it, I, that's pretty much it. Is there anything else you wanted to lay out there, or? Uh, yeah, no. I mean, even with Bandu and, and Prusa, we're, we're not. We don't really see them as like adversaries. I mean, mm. if anything, I'd love to see an AMS work with a Proforge four. Right? I'd love to see a Prusa tool head on a Proforge. Mm. So, so it's not so much we're, we're not so much competing. Where we're trying to just work with everything and everyone that's out there, mm. and to essentially create a machine that the end user can appreciate and also uh, build in a way that is custom to them. Oh, great. Yeah, well, hopefully some of that attitude rubs off on them. <laughs> it's, it's a great attitude to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, Adil, again, thank you very much for taking um, you know the time to speak with me and us and go over the Proforge 4. Um, again, I'm super excited to build it, and congratulations on, on delivering. Um, thank you, thank you. And, yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess that's it. Thank you again. All right, I'll, I'll see you then. Yep, thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, no okay, problem. take care. All right, take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Yeah, and...